So the purpose of this video is to explain conditionals and necessary and sufficient conditions. Okay, so conditionals are statements that take the if A then B form. So if Patrick makes a shot, then the Bobcats will win the game. That's a conditional. In such statements, A is called the antecedent and always follows the word if. B is called the consequent. All right, so in this example, Patrick makes a shot is the antecedent, and the Bobcats will win the game is the consequent. Notice I could also express the same claim in the following way. The Bobcats will win the game if Patrick makes a shot. Again, Patrick makes a shot is the antecedent because it follows the word if. In the first part of the sentence, the Bobcats will win the game is then the consequent. Now conditionals are not themselves arguments uh, because the antecedent in a conditional is not claimed to be true or to support a conclusion. When people present arguments, they claim that the premises are true and that those premises imply a conclusion. However, when people present conditionals, they are not claiming that the antecedent or conditional is true. Rather, they're claiming that if the antecedent is true, then the conclusion follows. So technically, conditionals are not arguments. However, arguments can contain conditionals. So for example, I could say if A, then B, A, therefore B. Right? And we'll come across those later. Now. Um, Conditionals really capture the relationship between necessary and sufficient conditions. And Patrick Hurley nicely defines these two um, um, conditions. He says, A is a sufficient condition for B whenever the occurrence of A is all that is needed for the occurrence of B. For example, being a dog is a sufficient condition for being an animal. On the other hand, B is said to be a necessary condition for A whenever A cannot occur without the occurrence of B. Thus, being an animal is a necessary condition for being a dog. And he uses the example of a box with unknown contents. And he says, if I tell you that there's a dog in the box, then you know for sure there's an animal. right? Because being a dog is a sufficient condition. It's all that is needed for being an animal. However, it's not necessary that the box contain a dog in order for it to contain an animal, since the box could contain some other uh, non-dog animal, like a cat. right? So take a look at this screen. And you can see here that the antecedent is always a sufficient condition in a conditional. The consequent in red is always the necessary condition. So if I say if A then B, A is a sufficient condition and B is the necessary condition. Let's look at the exercise here too. Hydrogen is a blank condition for water. That would be necessary because you have to have hydrogen but it's not sufficient because you also need oxygen. Number two, being a dog is a sufficient condition for being an animal. All you need to do is be a dog to be an animal. But there are you don't have to be a dog to be an animal. So it's not necessary. It's only sufficient. Right? OK, take a look at this screen. And maybe the, this way of defining it will help it sink in to your brain. Okay? Um, you can see here, necessary conditions are those that must be present for the conclusion to be true. However, they're not enough by themselves to make the conclusion true. And sufficient conditions are what is enough for a conclusion to be true. It's all you need. So in the exercise, you may want to pause it, but lighting a match is a sufficient condition for creating a flame, because that's all you need. But you could also, it's not necessary, because you could create a flame with a lighter or um, rubbing two rocks together or what have you. Look at the second one. Intending to wear something on your head is a necessary condition for being in a hat. But it's not sufficient, because I could intend to wear a phone on my head, but the phone's not a hat. That one's kind of debatable. but. Uh, let's do the third one. Winning the lottery is a sufficient condition for becoming rich. right? Um, so that's all I need to do to be rich, is win the lottery. But it's not necessary, because I could get rich in other ways, you know, like robbing a bank. <laughs> all right. So if you think about it, then, something can be necessary but not sufficient, like oxygen for water. Sufficient but not necessary, like if it's red, then it's a color. So redness is sufficient but not necessary for it to be a color. And it can be both necessary and sufficient. So having a spine is required to be a vertebrate. And it's all that's required. So that's necessary and sufficient. Look at this exercise. Dressing well for an interview is usually a blank condition for getting a job. That's necessary. Because usually you have to dress well, but you also have to answer the questions well. Right? And there are exceptions, of course. Being human is a blank condition for being a mammal. Right? And that's sufficient. That's all you need. But that's you know you could be a mammal in other ways, too. Being male is a blank condition for being a bachelor. Okay, That's necessary, because a bachelor, by definition, is an unmarried male. So this is necessary, but not sufficient, because you also need to be unmarried. And then finally, from Plato, having a belief is a blank condition for having knowledge. That's necessary, according to Plato. 
because you have to have a belief, but it's not sufficient because I could believe that the earth is not moving or that it's flat. And those that's not knowledge. It's false. So having a belief is necessary but not sufficient. My belief also has to be true and I have to have good reasons for believing it. On this slide you see another um, way of thinking about the distinction if you're still trying to get around it. And the answers in the exercise is being a mammal is a right necessary condition for being a cat. Looking good, well this one, it depends on who you're talking about. It could be necessary, sufficient, or neither. Okay? And then thunder is a sufficient condition for knowing lightning is near. Okay? So why does all this matter? Well the distinction is very important. In philosophy it often arises when we use the Socratic method to attempt to define a word. You know, like knowledge. And um, so in order to engage in that debate, it's important to know what necessary and sufficient and so are, uh, conditions are uh, because we're looking for the sufficient conditions, necessary and sufficient conditions for knowledge. In ethics, I might argue that having DNA is a necessary condition for being a human person. Right? However, skin cells have DNA, so it's not a sufficient condition for human personhood. So the sufficient conditions for human personhood is a controversial matter. Um, other reasons you can see on the screen, you know, the logic tests, they love to test you on your if-then knowledge, your conditional knowledge, and try to confuse you and stump you there. <laughs> um, also, again, it's important for clarifying philosophical concepts. And then many fallacies, many of them, are based on misunderstanding conditionals. And one of those we'll see later is affirming the consequent. So that's why it's important. Thanks.